how do you perform your dekes? With multiple motions or with one motion? There's a big question around this exact topic. The traditional toe drag is taught by rolling the hands over, getting the toe completely straight up and down like this. That allows you to pull the puck back in a straight line. From there, you want to pull it diagonal. Now that's how it's been taught. That's how it's laid out in the textbooks. But is that actually what the NHL is doing game? And the truth of the matter is, after looking through tens of thousands of hours of the best players, they actually do not use the traditional toe drag. They instead use a combined drag, making it all one motion. My friends at Train 2.0 call this a cane drag and that's a general theme with one motion versus two motions how much time it takes one motion to pull off another truth is that there's always all these arcs the puck actually falls along with your arcing that you go with this is a theme of precisely controlling the puck and you have to look at nhl or stick handling in slow-mo in order to see this looking at the whole image not just the hands not just the stick not just the feet looking at the hole and what you see is that even on the cane drag it all becomes an arc of a motion instead of a linear back and forth motion which is what ends up being game transferable so the reason i started with the toe drag is because it's the most evident area where you can see the multiple motion versus one motion problem you don't have to think about it too much most of these other movements as well the timing of it just takes longer with something that takes multiple motions as opposed to just a singular motion and so i hate to repeat myself but something that goes like that takes much longer than something that goes like that the timing parts where it shows up most evidently as far as like puck control too on the on the toe drag like you can do something like this all the time like even with uh like the cane drag classically you don't have to pull it like back all the way entirely if that makes sense. You just need like enough of toe pressure that it makes the puck go backwards slightly as opposed to forwards and then back. That's all you need is just for, for that specific uh, cane drag is going from toe to heel and then in that arcing motion. Now you, you do need the option to have it pulled back further, let's say, than you would have just from being straight up here, but it still goes to show you that having it as one motion is way better for you than something that takes a, a few motions. Let's do uh, another example here. So the Bedard slash Matthews change of release, toe drag release shot as Coach Chippy says. That's also another one where some players will do one motion like Matthews and Bedard, and then they'll be very successful with that shot. But then players that take multiple motions, well, the consistency isn't quite there, even though you still will see them, let's say, pull, pull it back to change the angle, instead of going from right here to straightforward lunge. There's obviously a time and a place for. Matthews and Bedard make it a singular motion. That's why they're more successful with those shots compared to other players who try to copy it. It's because they're using one motion, whereas all the other players that you see are using multiple motions. Here's a third example, and that has to do with skating. I'm actually gonna combine an element of stick handling with it. People will say that McDavid, McKinnon, the best skaters slash stick handlers on the planet where they combine speed and stick handling together, where they say, they're faster with the puck than without the puck. They'll say that they separate the hands from the feet, and that's why they're able to do the, the things that they do. The problem is they're also the only two players on the planet who have successfully gone at top speed with the stick handling that they do at the same time. My theory with this is that they are also using one motion instead of multiple motions. And here's the explanation as to how that fits into this specific theory. They synchronize their hands with their footwork. So you'll often see them tapping the puck forward, gathering it up, right? As they change direction, it's exactly the same thing. Going all around, right? If they were to separate the hands with the I don't even know if I know how to do this. It's not gonna feel right. But let's say I try to do that as well, where I don't know, like 
Na name, let's just give like bad skating examples if, if I can even find them. It's not gonna feel like, I can't even demo it, it's so bad, but maybe that's the reason I can't demo it is because it's not possible. I wanna see if these other coaches can do it actually. But to make it all tie together, like how is that possible if you can separate the hands from the, the footwork that you're doing or keep the upper body, that's what it is, the upper body separated from the lower body, like, I don't know. That doesn't seem to make sense. They're coordinated together, of course. They synchronize together. Maybe as the upper body twists this way, the lower body twists this way, but then they come back and recenter and realign again. So is that really separated if they're coming back together and coiling together, as what folks like David Weck like to say? I don't know. That, that seems to not be true, according to those biomechanics and the people who actually look at the stuff. To think of the two as like separated, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Like you'd have to keep the upper body stiff as the lower body like moves around. But the problem there is that it becomes multiple motions as compared to a singular motion where everything actually combines together when you synchronize the upper and the lower body together. And let me, let me give an example actually with the corkscrew and putting my stick on my shoulders. So let's say like I kept the upper body still as the lower body moved together. I have to concentrate on two things at once where, and multiple things at once I should say, which is moving the lower body, si uh, like going side to side, you know, and then trying to keep my upper body still. But even then, as I try to do that, it's not really staying that still, right? Like I'm trying to do two things at once, but what if you do one thing all together? What if you make it all one motion, like having your upper body swing this way as your lower body opposes it, and then, oh my God, you're going so much faster with a lot less effort. I don't have to think about activating my core and I have free speed. It's so easy. You have some people who just don't test anything. It kind of bothers me, but that's also a good thing in the sense that it allows me to separate myself from them. So I'm in some ways glad that they exist. It's also very like confusing at the same time. And even when you try to debate them, they just end up becoming couch potatoes. They don't even test the things that they do to, to, to falsify it. I'm the exact opposite of that. I try to falsify everything that I do. I just tell you what I'm discovering. I let you know when I'm wrong. It's not like this thing is a full experiment because there are things that have been established for years and years that I always go back to in, in a sense it's traditionalism, but even with the stuff that I discover and try to falsify, like I'm trying to falsify the traditional, let's say. And traditional in the sense of like what I've studied over the past five years in order to change the way that my training has evolved, let's say. I got that thought just because of how HG has like recycled exercises from, from the past, like 50, 100 years ago when exercise was first starting out. In some ways it's traditional thing that they look at and then they try to falsify and make sure that those exercises actually work by falsifying them, by creating standards, by making sure that it's like, hey, well, let's give these exercises their due. Let's get really good at them and see what happens if it actually works or not. Even if we don't believe in it, we're still going to get good at these exercises um, to, to, to make it good. And that's the, the whole point of doing one motion versus two motion, doing falsifying of tests like this. And what I was just mentioning with the skating here is that I can actually debunk the upper body being separated from the lower body just by using the one motion versus multiple motions um, analogy, which is that if you try to keep your upper body still, you have to use multiple motions in order for that to happen. But if you let everything coil and synchronize together smoothly, then it all becomes one motion together, even if it looks like the upper body is separated from the lower body. So that's how it fits in the skating. This is a very interesting topic. If you have any questions, just please let me know, because this could get complicated really quickly. But my intent is to bring to light topics like this, make sure that it works on my body, and then I'll replicate it with a bunch of other people from my clients and just people who want information for free and helping out coaches. I don't want to make the coaches the enemy anymore. I want to actually help them out, but I want to change the traditional way, let's say, that hockey has been trained. There is a massive market to changing all of this, I think. So that's one motion 
versus multiple motions. Think about that. There's plenty of other areas that this shows up. This is kind of like a general overlay of it. And uh, yeah, please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching today's Hockey Hacks. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to share it with someone who you think could benefit from this. Also check out the Standard School, which is the link below, which details out every standard from skating, shooting, stick handling, strength, speed, etc. And then player specific standards like what McDavid can do, McKinnon, etc. Giving you the direction you need for your hockey training. We also have HG for Hockey. On the HG app, you can get half off your first month by clicking the link in the description. And if you would like to apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me directly, which would be the best alternative to seeing me in person, you can do that as well. If you would like to see me in person for hockey training, I currently work out of HKY House in Waterford, Michigan. And if you would like in-person gym training or shooting training, I have a place for that in Westland, Michigan. Thanks again for watching and please let me know if you have any questions.